Come back with me to 1987 when I, my husband, and children landed in Calgary. As we pulled up to the driveway of our new house, neighbors came running to us. She was wearing a bow in her hair and had crinolines underneath her skirt. He was wearing a Stetson hat and had a belt buckle the size of a pie plate. They said to us, you can't be real Albertans unless you square dance. We're picking you up Monday night. Monday night, there we were. do si do round you go. Swing your partner to and fro. She's a pretty gal, you know. So twirl her, lead her, and keep her in tow. Oh my goodness, that sounded like my grandpa yelling at my mom and my aunties, you women belong in the kitchen. But guess what? We kept going. For five years, Les and I were Western whirlers. <laughs> Soon after, I learned about other Alberta women, women such as the Governor General at that time, Lois Hole. I heard K.D. Lang singing on the radio, Big Bone Gal of Alberta. And then I heard about the Famous Five and the Famous Five Foundation. In historical terms, what did Alberta look like for women in 1905? The women that immigrated here from all over the world. This is an example of a home of a settler. Earthen floor, stove in the middle, pipe up through the roof, perhaps a box with clothes and other items where family members slept. If these women had come from England, I wonder if they received the royal wave as they embarked upon the ship to come to Canada. What's the royal wave? I'll show you. Elbow, elbow, wrist, wrist, touch the pearls, flick! Let's do it together. Elbow, elbow, wrist, wrist, touch the pearls, flick! Now, someday if you are feeling annoyed with your situation or your home and feeling some discomfort, just consider this situation and then do the royal wave. Elbow, elbow, wrist, wrist, touch the pearls, flick, and let your annoyance go away. It was in 1905 that Alberta was declared a province of the country. And it was named after the fourth daughter of Queen Victoria. Notice that we were one letter away from being called Albert. And in one time in our history, I wondered if our province might have been called Ralph, if you remember that era. It was in 1911 that Emily Murphy, one of the famous five, and Henrietta Muir Edwards, also the famous five, advocated for the Married Women's Protection Act. And what does that mean? Wives get one third. It meant that if the farm or the home was sold, the wives would get one third of the proceeds. Then in 1914 and 1918, World War I broke out. The world was in turmoil. And prohibition in 1915 came along. Nellie McClung, who was a proponent of prohibition, is, was a past teacher and she used to go into the schools to teach children the evils of alcohol. She would take two glasses with her. One had alcohol in it, the other one water. She would take two juicy worms and put one in the alcohol and one in the water. The worm in the water would swim and smile and have a wonderful time. The worm in the alcohol would shrivel up and die. One day she asked the children, now tell me children, what did you learn from this demonstration? A little boy put up his hand and he said, Miss McClung, Miss McClung, if you drink alcohol, you won't have worms. <laughs> Women across Alberta joined the Women's Christian Temperance Union. They did that because they said, we want our men home with us rather than in the bars. If you think about that situation, here's another one. In 1915, the Married Women's Protective Act was passed 
and it prevented the sale of the home or the farm without telling the mother or wife. Now this is way before the era of the famous actress Zsa, Zsa Gabor who married seven or more men. She used to say, I'm a wonderful housekeeper. Every time I get a divorce, I keep the house. Also at this period was the suffragette movement. Suffragette means any person who supports the concept of a woman having the right to vote. Wow. Indeed, in 1916, suffragettes won. Women had the right to vote. This is a photo of Emily Murphy and Nellie McClung, both of the Famous Five, and Alice Jameson, who was a Calgary police magistrate. They were celebrating. They bought new hats and had a photo taken. In the meantime, Emily Murphy had become a magistrate, that is a judge, of a women's court in Edmonton. And she had said that the courts weren't treating women properly. Somebody threw up their hands and said, well, then you be the judge of the women's court. But over and over again, lawyers would stand up and say, you cannot make a judgment because you actually are not a person, really. There was an act called the British North American Act that reads, women are persons in the matters of pain and penalties, but not persons in matters of rights and privileges. Nellie was furious and she decided to contact other women she knew that would support abolishing this act. Emily contacted Irene Parlby, the first Alberta woman MLA. Irene was feeling frustrated about some of the comments made about her by her male colleagues. Oh, she's too emotional, she's too chatty, and she's indisposed once a month. We women know what that's about. Emily also contacted Henrietta Muir Edwards, who lived in the Lethbridge area and was well known for starting the YMCA and the Victoria Order of Nurses. She also was very informed about legal matters. Irene also call, contacted Louise McKinney. She lived in the Clare's home area and she was one of the founders of the United Church and the Humane Society of Alberta. And then there was Nellie McClung, who was a prolific writer, journalist, and a past teacher. Remember the worm and the alcohol? So these five women got together for pink teas. Pink tea was code word for politics. Emily had brothers who supported her and were lawyers. They asked these five for one of Emily's brothers to go to England with a petition to change the British North America Act so that women could be persons. That happened and it was determined that nobody was using that law for years and it was thrown out immediately. And immediately, all women in the British Empire were declared to be persons. It was such an exciting event that the Famous Five were written up in the paper in 1929. So indeed, women, just know you are now persons but your great grandma might not have been. My grandmother wasn't until 1929. Now we move on to the next generation. Fast forward to 1939 when World War II broke out. This is an image of my father who served overseas. My mother also served in a factory. My grandfather no longer said, you belong in the kitchen. Women were now told, oh, we need some women to look after children in a childcare center, but we need many other women to roll up their sleeves and help out. How did the government decide where to position women in jobs? 
They use the Myers-Briggs Personality Indicator developed by a mother-daughter team in the United States was spread all over the world to help with the war effort and that indicator is still used today. You can Google Myers-Briggs Quiz and learn your own Myers-Briggs Indicator. Then we move to 1995 when two friends in Calgary were having a chat. Nancy Miller is a researcher and historian. She wrote several books, including Stories of Canadian Graveyards. Her entrepreneur and journalist friend, Francis Wright, asked Nancy, oh, you've seen many grave sites. What are the grave sites like of the famous five? And Nancy said, nothing special. Actually, they just say, beloved mother. And that conversation was the spark of the Famous Five Foundation, which led to a statue on 8th Avenue Mall that you can see here in Calgary. It also was ended up having a sister statue in Ottawa, veiled, unveiled in year 2000. Also curriculum in the school started to include the history of women and now we have the big push to also honor our indigenous peoples in our history books. In 2004 up until 2012, the famous five statue was featured on the $50 bill. I do want to mention that Thelma Chalabeau became Canada's first Indigenous woman senator, named by the Prime Minister at that time, Jean Chrétien. In 2012, Alberta had its first woman premier, Alison Redford, briefly. From 2015 to 2019, Rachel Notley filled the role. And of course, now we have Daniel Smith. We'll see how that unfolds. So what can we glean from wondrous Western women wisdom? Here are some quotations to ponder. Irene Parby said, women ought to be more impatient. There is no virtue in sitting quietly by, accepting the slow progress of the evolution of an idea. Louise McKinney said, the purpose of a woman's life is the same as a man's, to make the best possible contribution to the generation in which she is living. Nellie McClung said, women who set a low value on themselves make life hard for all women. It was Emily Murphy who said, I feel equal to high and splendid braveries. Why did the wondrous Western woman cross the road? She crossed the road to show the gophers it could be done and to show them how to do it. <laughs>